We are going to make a crock pot buffalo chicken. It sounds delicious. When we are doing chicken in the crock pot, I definitely prefer chicken thighs. I think that they cook up a lot nicer than chicken breasts. They don't get dried out quite as easily. I am gonna be trimming quite a bit of fat off of these, and then we're also going to cube it. I'm just cutting maybe into bite-sized pieces. I'm not concerned with them all being perfect or exact or anything like that. I just wanna make sure that they aren't too big and they aren't too small. But you know, chicken thighs don't cut super evenly either. Now this recipe is one where the chicken cooks for a few hours and then you add in broccoli at the end. Let's start the seasoning process. I am starting with some paprika and this is just gonna about use this, but I have a backup. I got really smart this time, guys. And when I was ordering groceries, I made sure that I had backup of the things that I typically run out of. So we're adding about a half tablespoon of paprika. You want this to have a good amount of flavor, okay? Same with the parsley, about a half tablespoon. Right around a half teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder. Half teaspoon, I think I said that. I always add a little more though because we just love these flavors. We have chipotle chili pepper here. So you can just use chili powder if that's what you want. If you wanna cut down and make this a little more mild, I'm looking for the heat, okay? You don't have to make this super hot, but I'm gonna go ahead and add this chipotle chili powder. We keep this around when we wanna add a little bit of spice to a dish and you really only need about a quarter teaspoon of this. So really not much at all. And I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna be using Cholula, but use whatever kind of hot sauce you prefer. About right around a fourth cup. And then about two tablespoons of butter. Now this is salted, you can use whichever one you prefer. We're going to mix all of this together. Now, obviously this is not a ton, but like I said, that broccoli is gonna help to bulk it up. If you feel like you need to make more, I would just double this. Just, you know, however much you feel like is gonna be the right amount for your family. Man, you can smell the spice, love it. Okay, I'm adding just a few tablespoons of water. That I mean, really, maybe like two or three. It's just gonna help to make a little bit of a sauce as this is cooking. It, it's going to make its own liquid anyway, but adding that water is just gonna help to add some more sauce in there, which if you're serving over rice or potatoes or something like that, it's nice to have that sauce. Then when we throw the broccoli in there too, it's gonna add to the broccoli, so good. You can cook this on low for three to four hours, or you can cook it on high for one to two hours. I am going to, let's just go ahead and cook it on high. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, let's do high. I've got some broccolini here that I went ahead and just chopped up. We've also got some cream cheese and this has been in the crock pot. It is nice and hot. I actually came in and turned it to keep warm because we didn't need, we weren't quite ready to eat yet. So now we're gonna turn it back up to high. We're outside working on the deck. Let's add in about four ounces of cream cheese. Probably even go less than that, maybe like three. Add in the broccolini and just let this cook for about 15 to 20 more minutes. And then we will add in just a little bit of cheese at the end as well. Friends, this is so delicious. Do not skip this one. You saw I made it with chicken thighs. It's so, so, so good. The sauce that comes along with this, it's not that spicy. There is a little bit of kick to it, but man, this one is so good. Okay, it's 8.26. Normally I leave for church around 8.15, so we're running a few minutes behind. This is one of those crock pot recipes when you need to throw a crock pot recipe and just dump everything in really fast, put it into the insert and just walk away. This is the one for you. It's so easy. I can put this together in under five minutes, okay? So we're just gonna do that. We're gonna throw everything in here. Now I wanna tell you, if you wanna make it a little bit extra, get yourself a poblano pepper or a jalapeno and an onion and dice it up really well. Saute it over on your stove top in a little bit of butter or oil and add that in here too. Like I said, I need to get on the move immediately. So we're gonna skip that portion of this. 
I've got some chicken thighs here. You can do this with chicken thighs or chicken breasts, whichever one you prefer is completely fine. You guys know we're a thigh family, so we usually will go for that. Um, also, I'm just gonna put them right here into the bottom of my crock pot. We're gonna shred them later, so I can actually worry about cutting off the fat right before we're ready to eat this. I don't need to do that right now. Also, I know I've said it here before, but in case you're new, we often have a crock pot meal on Sundays because on Sundays I can throw everything in before we head for head out for church and when we get back it's ready to go. So simple and convenient for Sundays. Now this specific one is not my husband's favorite because he does not love corn inside of recipes. He actually really loves corn but just not in a recipe. He's gonna be fine. He'll he'll eat it, he'll enjoy it, but it's just not his favorite to add that in. But as with anything, just leave out the stuff that you don't love and add in things that you do. Okay, so I'm actually going to do my spices next. I wanna kind of coat the chicken in these spices. Did you hear me say that there's corn in it? <laughs> I heard you. Uh, we have cumin here. I need about a tablespoon of cumin. And honestly, again, this is one of those recipes where you just throw in whatever amount you think looks good. We also need about a tablespoon of chili powder. I like a lot of chili powder in this one because it really enhances the flavor. About two teaspoons of paprika. Now I didn't add onion, so we're gonna add some onion powder, probably a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half. And then same with the garlic powder. Now, if you want a little bit of extra heat, add in a touch of cayenne, maybe a half teaspoon or so. It doesn't need to be too much. And then salt. For mine, I'm adding a little bit of extra salt because we are using bone broth, which is not quite as salty as chicken broth. I've got a can of black beans. We are going to drain and rinse these. We are adding in a can of diced tomatoes, and I'm also gonna be adding in a can of diced green chilies, and we are not draining these. We're not rinsing them. Now, if you want, you can just get a can of Rotel or something like that. I happen to already have these, so that's why we're gonna go with those. Let's add in our corn. I'm only gonna be adding in about half of this bag just because the whole bag would be a little too much just based on what we're making. Now, the full recipe calls for four cups of broth. We only used one pound of chicken versus two pounds of chicken. Ours is gonna be a little more vegetable-y, I guess you could say. I'm gonna start with three cups, maybe two. Let's just, we're gonna cover it. We're just gonna cover it, see what it looks like. So this whole thing would be four cups, but I, we're not gonna use four cups. We just don't need four. That's probably two and a half cups, right around what I thought I was gonna be using, two and a half to three cups. I just wanna cover everything in this, and then I'm gonna add in one bay leaf. Now you would cook this on high for about three hours or low for about six hours. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna do high just to be sure. So we'll get this started and then after church, we will shred up the chicken and have our toppings ready so that we can eat our lunch. All right, we're home from church. This has been cooking for about four and a half hours or so. Let's take the chicken out because we need to shred it and then put it back in. Also, I'm gonna take the bay leaf out because it's right here on top and that we're not gonna eat that. We should just be able to shred this with two forks very easily and I am able to, and then I'm gonna put it right back into the crock pot. I am kind of watching for the little fatty pieces because we don't want those in there. We're just gonna take those out. As I'm shredding up this chicken, I'm curious, what do you guys usually do after, for Sunday afternoon lunch? I know growing up a lot of times, my mom would do a roast, that was pretty common, but then, <laughs> We would get to church and there would be a group of people that would inevitably be going out to eat and invite us. And so a lot of times we ended up going out to eat. Um, we don't go out to eat a lot after church on Sundays, but we actually will do the Sunday evening. We go out or we'll order pizza or something like that on Sunday evenings. But I'm just curious, what is your, what's your Sunday afternoon go to? How does that usually work for you and your family? Okay, you can see all the good stuff in here. I'm definitely glad that I did not use four cups of broth, but if you're using two pounds of chicken, I could see where you would want more of that broth. 
We're gonna put this into bowls. And the cool thing about this, there's so many different toppings. You can do sour cream, avocado, tortilla strips, um, cheese, so many different topping options. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up an avocado because I think this will be really good in here. Oh, cilantro is a good one on here, but we love the different toppings that you can put on this too. All right, friends, we're, in, we're ready to eat. Let's give this a try. They're out playing basketball and she wants to be out there. What you doing? Come here, come on, what you doing? All right, let's get a bite. That has really good flavor, very good. This is one, like I said, throw everything into the crock pot. Excuse me. Throw everything into the crock pot and it's ready to go in the afternoon. I mean, it takes minimal effort. I love meals like that, especially on a Sunday where we've gone to church. I don't know if I've said this here before, but we are a set up tear down church at the moment. So we are pretty exhausted by the time we get home in the afternoon. So I love having something like this ready and available, something with fantastic flavor that's gonna hold us over to the evening. What are you doing? This is such an easy dinner. We love having this one. When it's kind of one of those days where I'm not quite sure what it is that we're gonna have, this is a great option. So it is a sesame type of chicken. I'm using chicken thighs, feel free to use chicken breasts. It's all gonna go into the crock pot. I mean, seriously, so easy. I'm also running a little behind today. We're gonna get started on this. I'm gonna go do homeschool with the kids. I need to get ready for the day. All the things still have to happen. So chicken is in. When I make this, I like to mix up my sauce all together and really get it nice and combined before I put it into the crock pot. Now, technically you can just dump everything in there and stir it all together and you're good to go. I just usually do it this way. So we are going to add some stuff in here and then combine. I'm gonna start with about a tablespoon of minced garlic. About a tablespoon of ginger paste. You can use fresh ginger if that's your preference. And you guys know how much we love ginger, so I usually end up adding a little bit more. I feel like I say that in, oh, every time I use this. We need about a fourth cup of honey. Obviously, you can measure. I love eyeballing, you guys know. It smells amazing already. It's that ginger. We don't uh, consume soy, so we use this no soy, soy sauce. You need about a fourth cup. Feel free to just use regular soy sauce if that's what you want. It is no big deal. Eh, maybe a little more. Now, most of these recipes ask for ketchup. I don't, I just don't like ketchup. I mean, I will mix it into stuff and this recipe is totally fine with ketchup. But one thing that I've found that we love as a replacement is this sweet Thai sauce. This is a chili sauce. And so I use that instead of the ketchup. You need about two tablespoons. And honestly, I've made this before rather than purchased it. You can do either way. It's not that hard to make it. But if I don't have all the ingredients, I'll just pick up this bottle for a couple dollars and then we have that on hand. Adding a little bit of rice vinegar, just about a tablespoon of that. And then for a little bit of heat, we use sriracha. You do not have to, you can definitely skip this. Don't feel like, don't feel like you have to do that. But I go maybe a teaspoon and a half-ish and then just mix all of this together. And this is gonna get poured over that chicken. Okay, it's one o'clock. This actually doesn't take a really long time to cook. So I'm probably gonna cook it on low for about five hours or so. I don't know if I don't feel like it's cooking fast enough. So we have to leave our house tonight at six. So we actually need to eat a little earlier, maybe around five. So I may need to turn it up to high about halfway through, but basically with this one, you can cook it on low for five to six hours, or you can cook it on high for two to three hours, just depending on what you need. Just check your chicken and make sure it's done. It's a really easy recipe. Okay, let's just pour that all over the chicken. It's gonna cook in that. It's gonna be so delicious. This has been cooking for about three and a half-ish, maybe four hours. I'm gonna go ahead and take two forks and just shred it. It should be very easy to shred. You can choose to thicken up the sauce if you want, but we always like the sauce just as is. It's very tasty. All you would do is mix a little bit of cornstarch with that liquid and then put it all back in, mix it together, and leave the lid off on high, really letting it come together. 
you can see how incredibly easy this dinner is. I mean, it takes just minutes to throw together and then when we're ready to eat, it's ready to go. I mean, I love, I definitely consider this a dump and go crock pot meal. So easy to make. Let's taste it so you guys can see just how good it is. The flavors are always on point. Everyone always wants seconds. I don't know why I don't double this recipe when I make it because it's so good. It's just one of those where if we don't know what we're having for dinner, it's so easy to throw all of this stuff in the crock pot. And honestly, it's stuff we pretty much always have on hand. We are going to make these chicken fajita tortilla type bowls. I've got about a pound of chicken thighs in here. I did cut off a little bit of the fat and we're just going to add a little bit of salt. And I do want to add a touch of oil. This is avocado oil. Now, I think a lot of times people think they need significantly more liquid than you actually need in the crock pot. So I'm just gonna add just a few tablespoons because it will make its own liquid, okay? So basically what's happening is you're putting the lid onto the crock pot. So anything that would normally evaporate is staying in there. And so you, it's it, all the liquid is kind of staying in. So let's add some paprika. I like to add a good amount of paprika, okay? Like at least a tablespoon. Really good amount. You can do this on the stove top too, but we are busy on outside projects right now, so I just wanna have everything ready to go. I've got some chili powder. Again, I'm doing about a teaspoon. I'm gonna add some cumin, about a teaspoon of cumin. And some garlic. So we'll add maybe like a clove and a half or so. Now, I personally do like to add some oregano in here too. Just love the flavor of oregano. We're gonna cook this on low. I'm probably gonna cook it for about four to five hours or so, but I'll check it at around three and a half just to make sure that it's you know not getting overdone or anything. So we're already actually on low and we should be just set. Now we can just set this to the side and move on with our day. All right, friends, we are deep into deck work. So we have been outside working on the deck pretty much for the past couple of hours. I'm coming inside just to throw some peppers and onions into the crock pot with the chicken that's already been in there. This has been on, this has been on low for about four hours or so. I like to cut our peppers and onions into pretty large strips. That way, if you want peppers and onions, you can easily add them in, but if you don't want them, they're really easy to pick out. So completely up to you. But I think about 30 minutes to an hour gives the perfect consistency and texture to these in the crock pot. We actually like ours to stay a little bit crunchier, so we lean more toward the 30 minute mark than the hour. So it all just depends on how soft you want those peppers and onions to get. If you were at my house right now, this is the noise you would constantly be hearing in the background. Okay, so like I said, this has been cooking for about four hours on low. I'm gonna throw all those peppers and onions in here. I do like to break apart the onions a little bit just so they don't stay in big, huge chunks with the layers all stuck together. Now you may have noticed that I didn't break apart or shred the chicken before I dropped these in there and that's because the second that you mix the chicken together with the peppers and onions, it is going to fall apart and shred so easily. So I do like to do that just to make sure those peppers and onions get mixed in with all that amazing seasoning that we threw onto the chicken. And that's really all that I do. Now the lid can go on and it can just stay there for about 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on how long it's gonna be until you're ready to eat. I do turn it on high just so that it will really cook those up. Our favorite way to serve this is in burrito bowl form. So we usually serve it over rice. I cook my rice in bone broth and a little bit of salt, just giving it some extra protein. And you can really serve this however you want to. There are so many different ways, like cauliflower rice, you could just have it plain, you could serve it in tortillas. However you like it and whatever flavors you enjoy, that's the best way to serve it. And then this is so awesome because use whatever toppings you love. So if you like salsa, if you like avocado, Avocado, sour cream, guacamole, whatever your favorite toppings are, make a taco bar out of it almost, like a fajita bar. And we love this. It's such a quick go-to dinner. I know I can throw it in the crock pot in the morning and we have a good hearty meal at night. These fajita bowls are some of our favorites because I can throw everything into the crock pot and then later on we just add whatever toppings we love. And everybody loves a different topping. So I love to add 
Greek yogurt or sour cream, maybe a little bit of cheese, kind of depending on my mood, some avocado. We love some feta cheese, Kalamata olives. You can add whatever you want, depending on your favorite flavor. So add these, have kind of like a bar set up where you can add all your favorite toppings. They're so delicious. Our verse today comes from Titus 3.1. Remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one and be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle toward everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you need more inspiration, check out the video that I have listed above here. You've got awesome recipes in this video. We love these and you guys will too. I hope you're having a great week.